awesome. So that's sharing now. So welcome everyone. Thanks for being here today. Uh, we're going to talk about a really hot topic in the health coaching world, which is imposter syndrome. So I'm hearing so much about this from the students that I coach um, who are going through IIN. Uh, I heard a lot of this this week when I was talking to students um, about how they're feeling and what they want to work on and imposter syndrome was a big one. I also hear this a lot in my Facebook community. So people who are joining my group there often post that one of the things that they want to learn most about is imposter syndrome or one of the things that they want to move through. So I know that it's a, a really hot topic out there. So I've got some notes. I have eight tips that I want to share with you today. I'm really excited to talk about this one because I just, uh, I, I think it's such an important one and it really does hold health coaches back from moving forward. I, I just hear this so often. And so I hope these tips are going to be helpful for you today. I know there are things and strategies that I've used in my own life to move through a bit of imposter syndrome and I'll, I'll share a little bit about my own experience with it too. So thanks for being here today. So, so let's get into it. Um, first, I just really wanted to say, you know, what is imposter syndrome? What really is, is happening there? So it's kind of this feeling and it's, it's so pervasive in, in so many areas of the world. I think, you know, stat is that 70% of people in professions feel some sort of imposter syndrome. So it's this feeling that, you know, we're, we're consciously telling ourselves, I got this, I can do it, I'm ready. And we put on this brave outward appearance and this brave face and we go forth and, you know, we, we enter into whatever it is that we're trying to do. For us, it's, it's the health coaching world. But inside, what's actually happening is likely you're feeling pretty sick to your stomach, like you want to throw up, um, you get those nerves, and in your head, we've got all of these negative thoughts swirling through, you know, repeating sort of and playing tapes over and over and over again, these negative thoughts, these doubts and fears, we're not ready, we're not good enough. People are gonna figure me out. People aren't gonna like me. They're gonna know I'm a fraud. They're going to know that I don't know what I'm talking about. So if any of those kinds of thoughts are swirling through your mind when you think about actually coaching or launching your health coaching practice, I am with you. I totally understand. Um, uh, the thing with imposter syndrome is that I don't actually think it ever really goes away. I think we always have a little bit of it there, um, and, and I'll talk a little bit about why that is, but you know, I've been coaching for 10 years. I've been facilitating coaching circles for six years now, coached thousands of students, and you know, this week was a brand new round of coaching circles, and I still felt nervous. I got a little sweaty. I was nervous before those first calls, you know, and and my, my negative gremlin inner critic thoughts, um, that imposter syndrome was creeping back in again. You know, I was hearing things like, you know, what if they don't like you? What if they answer or ask questions that you don't know the answers to? You know, what if you mess up? What if you don't say something right? What if you don't sound smart enough? All of those things were swirling through my mind, you know, after all of these years. So I think the thing with imposter syndrome is, is that we're never going to fully get rid of it because it's kind of how we're hardwired in our brain. Um, but there are some strategies and things that we can do to move through it. So those are some of the tips that I want to share with you today to hopefully just give you a little bit more in your back pocket, a, a few tips and practical things that you can do to number one, understand where this is coming from and what it's all about, and then to be able to move forward. Because I just really want all of you to be the amazing health coaches that I know you can be and to not allow this imposter syndrome to keep us stuck. So um, it can, you know, be so ingrained and and so um, hard on ourselves and those thoughts just can be so powerful that it does it it holds us back it, it keeps us stuck so being able to move through them you know knowing that they're there knowing that they're probably always going to be there but finding ways to actually move through them and doing some of these things that I'm going to share with you today I think are going to help with that so let me just check my notes here and uh, see if I missed anything there. No, I think we're I think we're ready to jump in. So before I get into the actual tips, I did want to just talk for a minute about where these thoughts are coming from, where they originate and, and what they really are. So number one, these thoughts around being an imposter, being a fraud, not being, you know, enough, feeling inadequate, those all come from your ego. It's this place of fear. 
And what we all know about the ego is that it just wants to keep us safe, right? Safe and protected and in our comfort zone. And so when we start doing something different, when we start to move beyond our comfort zone, when we, you know, try out a new career like health coaching or try to practice new skills or show up in a new way, that's when these voices get really, really loud in our head because it doesn't want us to move beyond that, right? Because that's sort of like danger, danger zone, um, you know, stop, 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 danger, danger. Don't move beyond that comfort zone because that's when you might get into trouble. Um, so we know that this is sort of our reptilian brain that's trying to keep us safe from predators and things like that. It doesn't really apply so much, you know, in today's world. We're not going to die. We're not, you know, in threat um, of anything by trying on a new career and moving to becoming a health coach. But our brain still works that way. So we just have to understand that to know where it's coming from. So the other voice though, uh, and, and to let you know that there is another voice, uh, that's not the only voice that we can listen to, but that's the one that's really, really loud right now, right? As you're taking on uh, health coaching and, and trying to move forward with that career. So the other voice is the voice of love, right? So we have either fear or love. We're either operating from fear or operating from love. So for the most part, you know, when we're trying something new, it, it's the fear creeping in. So what we want to do is really try to cultivate that voice of love. This could be your inner wisdom, your intuition. Uh, you know, there are other words that you could put on it. Just, you know, really your greatness. It's, it's the voice that's really coming from your heart versus your head. So if we can start listening from that place and start cultivating that other voice that can hopefully try to overshadow those negative voices, then that can be a really useful thing to help us move through this imposter syndrome so really just want you to know we've got fear we've got love we've got those two voices and um, we can think about the devil and the angel on our shoulders as well kind of speaking to us so you know it's up to you to decide which voice you're gonna listen to I know that right now probably that voice of fear is much louder it's kind of screaming in your head at you with all the the dangers and all the things that are gonna happen if you move forward in this way and so we do we, we really have to cultivate and and be intentional and mind mindful about listening to that other voice, that voice of love, that inner wisdom. So my first tip is all about how can we start to do that? How can we start to listen to that voice of love, that, that, that voice that is really the voice of our dreams and our desires? So there's this all, always this ongoing battle between those two parts of our mind, right? We do have the dreams and desires, the things that we want to do, the big things that we want to accomplish. But a lot of times that fear and uh, that other side of our brain keeps us stuck. So how are we going to start cultivating um, this voice of love how can we start listening more to that voice versus the other one so uh, a couple of tips to do this number one is just a quick exercise that you can do to really number one get all of those doubt and fear and fraudulent voices out of your head um, and then again to start listening to the voice of love so the exercise is you really just take a piece of paper um, just a sheet of paper draw a line down the middle and on one side you're going to write all those fears and doubts and then so you're going to list all of those here the things that that inner gremlin is telling you and then on the other side you're going to start to write the opposing uh, statements um, like affirmations from the truth right this is the truth the, the fear is not the truth but you know that the truth is in your heart um, this is the voice of love so you can really just start to then write all those other opposing points of view that come from this place and once you have this list you know you get all those fears and doubts out of your head onto the page start cultivating the opposing views and then you have a choice you know when you're in a moment when that fear is overtaking when you're really feeling like that imposter you have a choice which voice am I going to listen to here so really just pause and making a conscious choice of which voice you want to listen to so that's the first way you can start cultivating that um, voice of love the other way is is with affirmations you know it, it very similar so they would be those sort of voice of love that truth um, so, you know, just start writing out affirmations about your whole, your health coaching practice. Um, you know, what do you really know is true about you? So for example, I know for a lot of people, um, 
you know, we have this, this doubt and fear, this inner gremlin that says, you know, I'm not enough, I'm not ready, I don't know enough. So that kind of can translate into your mind as, I can't do this, I'm not ready. So that might be the tape that plays over and over and over again in your head. I can't do this, I'm not ready. So what we want to do with an affirmation is just really rewrite that into the positive. So you could rewrite something that says, I am capable, I know enough, I am ready, and I'm excited to get started. So the key things with affirmations is that we want to write them in the I am format. So we want to start with I am, whatever it is. We also want to make it in the present tense. So as if it's already happening. So I am ready, I am enough. I know enough to get started, those kinds of things. And we do want to add some emotion to it. So if you can add in there, I am excited, I am ready, um, the, you know, uh, that excitement piece, you know, I get to do this work, um, I get the opportunity to help people um, become more healthy and well, those kinds of things. So those powerful affirmations can be a great way to, again, start cultivating that voice of love, start listening to that different voice that's not the fear, that's not the negative, that's not those doubts, but really looking at your strengths and everything that you know is possible. So that's my first tip, to start cultivating that other voice. My second tip, and that goes along with building that voice of love and cultivating that voice, is to do a little bit of a strengths inventory on yourself. So that little self-exploration piece. And it's all about reminding yourself how amazing you really are. So I want you to make a list of your strengths, your accomplishments, all the challenges that you've overcome in your life, those obstacles that you've moved through, kind words people have said about you, what are the things that your loved ones say about you, your attributes, your character strengths, what are your values? So once you start to cultivate and take this inventory of all the things that you know are amazing about you, that's gonna help you focus on the positive, right? Those strengths. You know, this is also an important coaching skill as a coach. This is what we wanna bring out in our clients. So we need to start cultivating that in our own lives for ourselves. So this is a great tool, a great way for you to start moving through some of that imposter syndrome to go back and reflect on how amazing and awesome you really are and all of the things that you've done, all of your accomplishments and achievements. Um, so that's a, that's a great tip to, to get started with this. So the third tip I have for moving through imposter syndrome, and I keep harping on this one almost in every one of my videos that I do, um, is we need as coaches to move away from being the expert. So if you're not the expert, if you're not showing up as the expert, chances are your imposter syndrome will be less because we have that feeling of inadequacy because we're trying to be an expert in something that we're not, right? So. We need to move out of being that expert and the authority as a coach in sort of the medical field and health and wellness trends. And we really need to adapt the coaching mindset, the coach approach, which is all about being the guide on the side, the ally, um, and really being that accountability partner for your client. Really honoring that they have the answers inside of them. They're not broken and they don't need to be fixed, right? So talked a lot about that on some other videos that I did, um, but I really just wanted to hit home today with this point that this is a really great way that you can move out of feeling inadequate and feeling like, feeling like an imposter if you're not trying to be an expert. So um, if we're trying to be a doctor and we don't have medical training, of course we're gonna feel inadequate. If we're trying to be therapists and we haven't you know, gone to school for therapy and to be a psychologist or a, 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 you know, a, a therapist, then we're gonna feel inadequate. Of course we are. We're coaches. That's what we need to become experts in, in coaching skills, in coaching techniques, in the coach approach, in the coaching mindset and behavioral change. That's what we need to become experts in. So if you're gonna do more training, if you're gonna do more studying, and coaching is really what you wanna do and, and who you wanna be, then yes, go do some more coach training. Hone those skills, build your competence in this area. But don't try to be an expert in something that you're not. That's always gonna keep you feeling like an imposter. So that's my third tip. 
Uh, the fourth one goes along with that a little bit is to really get clear on your on your scope of practice as a health coach. I did another Facebook Live on this as well. Um, and again, it's gonna help you get really clear on what it is that you can and can't do as a coach. So if you're not trying to do all that recommending and telling and prescribing and diagnosing and treating and all of those things, if you know what your lane is, um, what your scope of practice is as a, as a health coach and you stick within that, then you're gonna feel good about you know the, the role that you play and what you can and can't do as a health coach. So I think it is really important for all of us as health coaches to really go back to whatever training it is that we did and really get clear on our scope of practice and stay in that lane. That's really going to help you with imposter syndrome. The fifth tip I have is to really get clear on the coaching value proposition. So this is all about you as a coach really trying to get good at and, and, and express with your clients what coaching is and what it isn't, what the value of coaching is. So I had um, uh, someone in my community this week ask, you know, what do I do uh, when, you know, in this situation, if a client keeps asking me for suggestions and recommend recommendations, they're looking for me to be the expert. So I asked a few questions. Well, did you explain to them what coaching is? Did you explain the benefits of coaching? Did you explain how we are different from other health practitioners? So if you set yourself up as an expert who's going to tell somebody what to do and give them meal plans and give them a treatment plan, then that's what they're going to expect of you. So the other thing, the, the other way to handle this, I think, is to really show up in that, from that coach approach you're gonna have an agreement. It's gonna explain what coaching's all about. In the health history or your sales conversation, you're gonna talk about exactly what coaching is and what it isn't, how we're different from other health and wellness practitioners. You're gonna have the values, um, the values that we bring as a health coach. You're gonna explain all the benefits, but it's not gonna be, I'm an expert, I'm a doctor, I'm a therapist. That's not what you're gonna be doing. So if, if you're really clear and if your client is really clear at the beginning of the coaching relationship, on what coaching is and what it isn't, then that should alleviate some of those questions that your client might ask because you haven't set it up that way. You're not the expert. They are the expert on their lives. You have the questions. The client has the answers. So really, really, you know, as a new health coach, understand the value proposition of coaching. Get really clear on your agreement and how you are expressing um, and, and pitching to your potential clients what coaching is and what it isn't. That's really, really gonna help with some of this imposter syndrome. My tip number six is to stop some of the procrastination and distraction. So we, I find what I hear from a lot with new health coaches is, well, I just need to do more training. I'm gonna dive into the marketing side of it and get all that figured out, you know, and then I'll start coaching. So those are all valid things to do. I'm not discounting any of, any of them. But I really do think that sometimes they can be excuses, they can be distractions, and really procrastination techniques for holding us back, right? They, they keep us stuck where we are, we're not developing our coaching skills, we're not getting out there and practicing, um, so we're really not building in that any more of that um, confidence and confidence around our skills. So we're looking for something else. We're actually looking for more expertise. So it's gonna keep us in that expert zone. So really uh, to try to stop some of that procrastination and distraction, get out there and start doing something. Start with that low hanging fruit, just get started. Uh, take those baby steps and see you know, what you might need later on, but do get started. Um, do something uh, to start your coaching practice. So my seventh tip, uh, we're getting, coming to the end here, just two more. Um, I really do want to, you know, reiterate that you do not need to be 100% perfect in your own perfect in your own health and well-being to be a health coach. So I hear this so much from new students and and new coaches. Um, well, I'm not quite, you know, got all my own health and wellness figured out yet. I've still got things to work on. I don't look like a health coach. I might not be the perfect size. Um, you know. 
when I'm still working on things. And so again, we feel like a fraud because we haven't figured it out in our own life. Um, how could we possibly coach anybody else if we don't have it all figured out? So you do not need to be perfect in your own health and wellness to coach other people. You know, I'm sure you've all heard this before. You really just need to be a few steps ahead. And what I tell students all the time is, is that as long as you make your own health and wellness a priority, that you're working on it, that you're passionate about it, there's integrity there. Absolutely, you can stand in integrity as someone who is working on their own health and well-being at the same time that you are able to coach someone else and support them in reaching their health and wellness goals. So please know there are, there are multiple tracks happening. You're working on your own health and wellness journey. You're learning as a coach. You're showing up as a coach and coaching someone else. That can all happen at the same time. Absolutely, you can really stand in that integrity as long as you know that your own health and well-being is a priority and that you are taking steps. You are working on it in your own life. And then my final tip number eight is you gotta get some practice. So practice is really the only way that you are going to start building that competence and feeling confident as a health coach. So you can have all the knowledge in the world, you can study, 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 get more facts and information, but if you have not yet practiced those coaching skills, then you're never gonna feel confident in them. So we gotta get you some practice. I'm gonna share with you four different ways that you can get some coaching practice, um, even if you don't have paying clients. So number one, if you are still a student going through a health coach training program, I really encourage you to take advantage of all of the things that your training program is offering you. Buddy coaching, accountability partners, if there are coaching demos that you can participate in, volunteer for those. Uh, really, you know, get yourself a, a buddy coach and start practicing everything that you're learning, you know, through each module. Get on a call and really start practicing those things. So take advantage of everything, uh, all those opportunities within your training program for sure. Um, my next tip around getting practice is to get some practice clients. So I hesitate in saying this one because I know a lot of new students, uh, new health coaches will go out and get pro bono clients. I do not recommend 100% uh, free clients. So I just think that there can be some problems within that. So a lot of times I see people practicing with friends and family and taking them on as clients for free. Uh, and it doesn't work out so well. So this can actually um, take away <laughs> and make you feel more of an imposter and more of a fraud and more of a failure if your client's not invested, if they're not doing the work, if they're not showing up, if they're always rescheduling on you, you're gonna feel like a failure. You're gonna feel like, well, this just didn't work. Um, so what I recommend instead of just free pro bono clients with friends and family is to put a small fee. Maybe you have an introductory rate, a student rate until you graduate. Uh, when I went through, I charged $50 a session um, for, for my six month program for really, I think about the first uh, 12 clients that I worked with, I did not want money to be a barrier and I wanted to get the expertise and uh, I wanted to get testimonials and I wanted to get some experience as a coach. So put a nominal fee on your sessions and really do a great job at looking beyond your friends and family, um, really get clear in those health history conversations if this person is a good fit for you, if they're committed and really willing to invest in working at this. Um, make sure you get those testimonials at the end of those practice clients. So, um, you know, just thinking about, yes, absolutely, work with people, um, practice clients, maybe a, a low fee, you know, $25, $50 per session, something like that that people can afford. Do what feels right for you. Your market's gonna dictate, you know, the price that works best for you. But that way you know that the client's gonna be invested and you're going to be able to fully uh, show up as a coach and really step into that role fully. If you're practicing with friends and family, you can't really fully show up as a health coach because they know you from all the other relationships uh, and all the other jobs and things that you've done. So uh, it really is best to see if you can move beyond friends and family and find some you know, acquaintances, strangers, you know, those potential clients. So that's my tip. 
tip on practice clients. The other way that you can start practicing your coaching skills with friends and family is with friends and family. So absolutely practice your skills. So start showing up more coach-like with your friends and family, with your coworkers, with your colleagues. Um, practice those high mileage questions. Practice using open-ended questions. Practice your active listening skills. So listening really deeply, being really present to what people are saying to you. Um, following up by restating, reframing, summarizing, uh, paraphrasing what people are saying. So practicing those active listening skills, practicing silence, just giving a moment for someone else to really think and share what else they need to say. Absolutely, all of those skills can be practiced with your friends and family. It works great with kids. These are amazing communication tools. So if you can start using them in your own life and start showing up more coach-like, that as well is gonna help build your confidence and help you move through some of that imposter syndrome because you are showing up really as a coach. And then my final tip for getting some practice um, is to get a mentor, um, you know, sign up for another program that allows you to practice those coaching skills. That practicum piece is so, so important. And this is, I put this one in here as sort of a little plug for what I'm working on, um, building, you know, having been, been building my community on Facebook and um, really getting ready to launch um, some sort of practice space for health coaches. So for lack of a better term, I'm calling this sort of a practice skills lab where we'll be able to get together, um, we'll do some coaching demos, I'll demonstrate some things, practice our coaching skills, get a refresher, really start to hone and build those solid foundational coaching skills, and then you'll get to have an opportunity to practice one another. So by the end, you know, you'll have that confidence. You can get some testimonials from working with one another and you'll feel confident and competent in your skills to be able to go out there and put yourself in the world as a coach, start to get clients and start to do the amazing work that I know you can do as a health coach. So. Um, I, I really would love to hear if you have any feedback on if that kind of opportunity, that kind of offering would be beneficial to you. Um, I'd love if you just drop me an email or post any comments. If you think some sort of practice space where you can start to practice some of these skills in a safe environment and really build those would be of use to you. Um, I, I would just love to hear any of your feedback on that as I work towards um, building this and launching this program hopefully in the next couple of months. So um, those are my tips for you today on helping to move through imposter syndrome. Uh, let me just do a quick little recap on what we covered today. So we talked about the fact that, you know, our, our imposter syndrome comes from fear, comes from our ego, and how we can switch to, you know, listening to the voice of love and cultivating that a little bit. Uh, we talked about doing the exercise with the uh, line down the side and doing fear and love and writing what that looks like. Coming up with those powerful positive affirmations. I am ready. I know enough. I'm excited to start coaching. Those kind of affirmations can be really, really powerful. We talked about getting out of the expert mode and into the coach mode. So adapting that coaching mindset, that coach approach is so important. Get really clear on your scope of practice from whatever program you studied with. Develop your coaching value pop proposition. Get really good and clear at explaining what coaching's all about to your potential clients. Stop that procrastination and distraction and just start doing something. Start practicing your coaching. And please know that you don't have to be uh, perfect in your own health and well-being. You can do them both at the same time. As long as you're working on your own health and wellness, the integrity is absolutely there. And then the final point, get some practice, 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 so you can start building that competence and confidence as a coach. So thanks everyone for being here. Post those comments below or questions. I'd be happy to answer them. Have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.